A familiar question rocks the Marvel Cinematic Universe. What if? In episode 1 of the new animated series, the question gets supplied to Agent Carter. Specifically, what if Peggy Carter stayed in the room when Steve Rogers became Captain America? Agent Carter, wouldn't you be more comfortable in the booth? No, I'd prefer to stay. The answer, it seems, is chaos. During Hydra's attack on the Super Soldier program by undercover members of the State Department, Peggy's slightly altered proximity to the Super Soldier serum changes the whole game. Steve is shot before he can receive the life-altering injections and lies bleeding on the floor, while the capable Carter drops the saboteur and tells Steve to stay put. Short on time and bereft of other options, Carter climbs into the transformation chamber and gets pumped full of the serum herself. She emerges transformed, a towering Goliath of proper British strength. She receives a shield all her own, adorned with the Union Jack, and almost immediately starts beating her alternate universe American counterpart at the winning World War II game, nabbing the Tesseract from Arnim Zola without much muss or fuss. Steve rehabilitates and with the help of Howard Stark's engineering prowess, starts piloting a suit of Hydra Stomper armor, powered by the Allies' recently acquired Tesseract. Newly outfitted in a plate-armored mech suit, powered by an Infinity Stone and an insatiable patriotic go get em attitude, Steve Rogers enters the fray and joins Captain Carter on the battlefield. Let's hear it for Captain Carter! <laughs> but the fascist-smashing good times can't last forever, and Captain Carter finds herself at her lowest point right around the end of the story's second act. During Operation Where Eagles Dare, Steve is apparently killed in action, thanks to a stash of dynamite hidden on a Hydra train. Peggy interrogates and imprisoned Arnim Zola, learning that the Red Skull is planning to bust out an interdimensional champion at Castle Crake in the Black Forest. Accompanied by the Howling Commandos, Howard Stark and Bucky Barnes, Cap invades the castle. Inside of Castle Craig, our heroes discover that the Red Skull has captured Rogers, the Hydra Stomper armor, and the Tesseract that was inside it. He opens a portal, summoning a Lovecraftian horror from beyond the veil of existence to bring about Hydra's reign of terror. The terrible beast has more than a little in common with the classic Marvel monster Shumar Gorath. But as has often been said, he who lives by the unspeakable alien abomination must also die by the unspeakable alien abomination. And so the Red Skull gets smeared into a red paste, hoisted by his own extra-dimensional tentacle. Afterwards, Stark does like a good sci-fi super scientist is supposed to do, and hits some buttons frantically, trying to reverse the polarity hard enough to make the rapidly expanding squid bits go back to where they came from, but to no avail. Steve Rogers, now rescued and back in his jury-rigged, patch-jobbed, powered armor, runs out of juice before he can make much of an impact. The only solution to the tentacle problem is for Captain Carter to personally shove the eldritch horror back from whence it came. She disappears into the unknown, promising Steve a dance on her way out. Everything fades to black. Almost 70 years later, Carter returns, flanked by cuts of Jumbo Squid, out of a cosmic cube-induced portal at what looks like the Joint Energy Mission facility in the Mojave Desert from 2012's Avengers. A super soldier plucked from history stands ripe with promise of becoming the hero of a new era. It's all terribly familiar. So what do we learn here today? A lot is implied by the universe presented in the first episode of What If. First off, Howard Stark was capable of coming up with an Iron Man suit capable of harnessing the power of the Tesseract, potentially shifting the course of human civilization. But the really intriguing question that the episode leaves open is, what would a world without Peggy Carter look like? We know that Agent Carter was instrumental in the creation of S.H.I.E.L.D. during the 20th century of the MCU proper, an organization that itself became an unknowing incubation chamber for HYDRA. The Dark Energy Lab scene at the end of the episode looks well less manned than the one from Avengers. Maybe it's a coincidence, or maybe HYDRA got more of a foothold without Peggy around to keep an eye on things. We don't see anything about the world outside the lab circa 2012, but it's hard to imagine that things went better without the supervision of one of the Allied Forces' most legendary agents, even with Bucky and Steve set up to stand in for her. Without Bucky to use as their vibranium-armed super soldier, Hydra wouldn't have had their go-to agent available to kill Howard and Maria Stark on December 16, 1991. Thanks! You almost ripped my arm off! Without his father's absence, Tony might not have had any reason to rise to the occasion and learn how to take the wheel of his old man's company. What's worse, with Iron Man adjacent technology entering into play some six decades early, a whole new set of potential travesties would be lined up. Assuming that the US government retained the rights to the invention, the course of manned warfare on Earth would have drastically changed. 
and an international race to create powered suits would have likely kicked off during the Cold War. Opening the door to mid 20th century versions of the Crimson Dynamo, Titanium Man, and Iron Monger. Then again, maybe Howard Stark held on to the technology for himself and went into business selling Iron Man suits, powered by Tesseract Energy. With the cube no longer destined to sit in mothballs for decades in the wake of his up close comprehension of its potential, maybe Howard used the Tesseract and its physics defying abilities to finally realize that new elements that it had his eyes on but couldn't create thanks to the limitations of his day. Dozens of conflicts across US history would suddenly be shifted thanks to the presence of legions of Iron Men. Perhaps Howard refuses to relinquish the Tesseract to Project Pegasus, halting the creation of Captain Marvel and dooming the Earth upon the arrival of Thanos. The implications are countless. Or maybe we're just really overthinking a cartoon and everything's at more or less the same. Check out one of our newest videos right here! Plus, even more Looper videos about your favorite movies and TV shows are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.